pressing Alt H. Okay, so you notice the scaling is a bit off, but you don't have to worry because Blender has this uh, UV tools called the Average Island Scale. So go under UVs, make sure you select all the UVs. Go to UVs and uh, select Average Island Scale. And you automatically scale everything neatly to match the, uh, the, the corresponding uh, size of the original mesh. Next, you want to do is do you want to lay out everything nicely to use up all the texture space here? Okay, but uh, if you were to do it manually, I mean you can do it manually. But again, Blender includes this uh, wonderful Pack Islands, Pack Islands tool. You just uh, click Pack Islands, and uh, Blender will try to use maximize the use of all the UV space here. And essentially, what you've done here is that you have uh, created the UV layout for this jet plane. Okay, so once you've done that, what you want to do is that you want to export this UV layout to an image editor, be it uh, Photoshop or GIMP, and then uh, paint your textures based on this layout. So in order to do that, you first of all, you need to export this layout. So let me show you how to do that. So click on UVs and then select scripts and choose save UV face layout so we're gonna export this okay we're gonna export it as a uh, TGA okay we're gonna click OK we're gonna use default okay the size is 2048 by 2048 and we're gonna show the wire thickness at 1 as 1 okay, so I click OK and then your file explorer is gonna bump up and it's gonna tell you ask you where you're gonna save this uh, UV layout so I'm gonna save it in my uh, this folder I call this uh, UV jet layout and save okay it's gonna take a little while okay I'm gonna ignore this error okay and now I'm going to open up an image editor and I'm gonna open up the f the what the the file that was generated uh, from this export this script okay so I'm gonna open up my my gimp okay so this is a previous texture that I was working on so I'm gonna open up the UV layout that I've just exported Okay, which is this one, and I'm just going to open it. Okay, so this is what the layout looks like. All right. Okay, there's some uh, texture error around here, but anyway, this is what it looks like. And uh, what we need to do right now is that we need to uh, create a layer, a new layer, by clicking here. Okay, I'm using GIMP here. So you use the same uh, same size as layer. So for this new layer, we're going to put it below the uh, this this layout, and then uh, for this layout itself, the mode I'm going to use multiply so that I can see through. Because right now my layer contains nothing. Uh, I'm going to just drop some, uh, paint some, use my bucket tool, and uh, fill it up with a green color. Okay, because of the multiply applied on the background, I can see see through the lines. So what I'm going to do now is that um, I'm going to bring in some roundels, some Air Force roundels, and I'm going to use it to decorate uh, my plane. So I'm going to go to open, and open up a roundel. Okay, this one is fine. And okay, this is what this roundel looks like. Okay, I'm going to select all. Okay, and then I'm going to copy and close this. And then I'm going to paste as a new layer. And then I'm going to position this. Okay, first I'm going to use move. Position this uh, logo. Okay, let me put it between, under the background so that. Okay, I do not want to move the background. I'm going to move this one. Okay, sometimes for this GIMP it seems to want to move only the layer in front. Okay, so I'm going to scale this down. Holding down the control so you maintain aspect ratio. 
Okay, once you're happy with the scaling, you just press uh, scale. Okay, so I'm going to press M to just move the logo right about here. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate another just by grabbing and dumping it here. So I can put the other logo right about here. Okay, so and then I'm going to duplicate. Uh, okay, I'm just going to place paste another new one. Edit, paste as, paste as new layer. Alright, and I'm going to put this rounder on the wing. Okay, first of all, I'm just going to rotate this. Okay, and then just rotate a little bit more and then rotate. And then I'm going to scale it. Use a scale. Holding down the control so I maintain aspect ratio. I'll make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and then I apply the scale. Then I press M, I'm gonna move, and then I'm gonna put one of the logos here. Duplicate another one. And then perhaps put another logo right about here. Okay. So let's go to the um, original green layer here and make make the texture a little, little bit interesting. So I'm gonna use my paint brush and I'm gonna use the uh, okay a fuzzy brush and then I'm going to change the color to a blue color and start to paint blue color for the cockpit area okay and the good thing is that you can use uh, photographs of actual planes you can even uh, copy the texture and then paste it there All right, and uh, let's paint some camouflage pattern on this I realize there's this very nice brush called confetti in uh, GIMP and I'm gonna use some brown splotches. I'm just gonna paint some brown, uh, brown splotches on the fuselage of the plane. Just make it a little bit interesting. Okay, I'm gonna do it on the wing also. Because I'm painting this, okay, I'm painting this uh, below the logo, so I'm not I'm not afraid of messing up the logo. Okay, so let's just paint a very bright color, like a yellow stripe. Okay, this is just for fun. Okay, and uh, let's paint the stabilizer, one of the stabilizer with a yellow stripe, and then with a red stripe on the other side. Okay, just something interesting. Okay, so now we have our textures. So, but we cannot save it like this because we don't want to see the black lines. So we can just hide the uh, black lines, and now we can save this out as a texture. So go to File, Save As, and let me just squeeze this, make it a little bit smaller so you can see. So instead of saving as a um, the uh, GIMP file format, you can choose the file type you want here under select file type and uh, okay, let me make this a bit smaller again okay select file type and I'm gonna use PNG and the save is at the, bottle, uh, the bottom the video capture program can't show you so once you're happy with this uh, you have to make sure where you're gonna save it okay I'm gonna save it I'm gonna give it another name okay uh, layout and then I'm gonna give it Texture TEX. Okay, it's a PNG now, so the save button is at the bottom. So I'll click save now, and it says your image is exported. Can be saved as uh, cannot be uh, saved. So we need to merge visible layers. I say okay, and I'm gonna export and merge the visible layers. I'm gonna use the default settings and then save. Okay, it's probably easier and faster in Photoshop. Okay, but I want to show you how you can do that with uh, GIMP. Okay, so now once I've saved the texture, let me go back to Blender again. Okay, so what we do now is we assign a material to this uh, this model. Okay, so currently if we go to the material shader, it has already been assigned with the default material. Okay, so there's a, even a texture there which I already assigned here. Okay, so um, let me just show you how to do it with a new uh, material. So if you apply a new material, add new. Okay. Uh, by default, there's no usually there's no texture that is assigned, but uh, 
So if you want to assign a new texture, you just go to the texture buttons here and uh, and just assign a new one by clicking here. Okay, so now anyway, the, the texture is now activated. For the map input, uh, it would be best to use the UV because since we already assigned the UV uh, coordinates, the layout for this model. Okay, for the texture itself, we need to specify it as an image. Right, let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Okay, uh, the texture is an image. All right, and we are going to load the image. Okay, I'm going to show this trick. Hold down your control key and click on load so you can see all the images, uh, see the thumbnail. So let's go and look for the texture that we have just created. Okay, I remember calling it uh, not this one. Yeah, this one. Okay, so with the mouse click to load it and you should be able to see the texture being loaded here and if you click on the material buttons you can see uh, the UV coordinates being applied to the sample uh, sphere here okay, right now we can't really see it because we are at uh, solid shading so if you click on texture shading okay, if you are in texture shading you can't see it because we need to link the image in the UV texture window so I'm going to edit mode and because we already loaded up the image already, you can click on this button here, uh, browse existing choices, and you can click on UV jet layout texture. Okay, right now it's not working because my this button here, the sync UV and mesh selection is on. I'm going to disable it. Okay, I'm going to select all the faces again, and then choose the UV uh, layout texture. And now you notice that the uh, texture map is appearing very nicely on the aircraft and you can see the yellow stripe and the red stripe which I've painted just now is appearing nicely on it I've got the roundel on the wing I've got a roundel on the sides just as I've assigned in my texture layout and uh, there's even a roundel below the left wing here okay so let's render this and see what it looks like if you press F12 okay it's very good you can see the textures everything looking very nicely let me subdivide this, press Ctrl 3 okay, so that uh, the plane now is a little bit smoother and go to object mode let me change this to shaded mode Okay, in shaded mode you notice that it doesn't really display the textures very well but let me show you something if you were to go to game and click on GL material or rather blender GLSL materials and you show it in texture ah, you can see the texture much much better okay and if I render this again pressing F12 to render this is how you do it okay this is how you uh, lay out the UV texture especially this method is especially good for um, hard surface objects like uh, cars or uh, machines you know so basically this is how you do it I hope this video is informative and I hope it uh, help you understand how the uh, UV mapping in Blender works. Uh, thanks for watching again. I hope this is good for you.